In the previous videos, we already introduced the way to calculate CPI and inflation rate. Here, we just want to uh, go back and revisit the example we used before okay? with that hypothetical economy um, consuming only two goods, Coke and cheeseburger. Okay. Um, so as you can see here, uh, in the table, everything stays the same as before, except for the quantity of Coke. Previously, uh, we used 50 Cokes okay, uh, throughout these years. Now, uh, we replace that with 10, okay, 10 Cokes. But as you can see here, uh, the number stays, the quantity of coke stays the same um, across these years, okay? Uh, because we, you know, already said in the previous video that uh, for a CPI, we need a fixed market basket, okay? So it's still fixed, okay? Cokes and cheeseburgers and the quantities are also fixed, okay? Uh, here, I would like to suggest you to pause the video and guess what's going to happen to the CPI of these years after we're using the new long, new quantity of Coke. I would guess that you know our natural response would be, you know, the CPI should not change at all because um, here, no matter which number we're using. As long as it's fixed, it won't have any influence upon our CPI or inflation. Okay? Because remember, we said we artificially keep the quantity fixed or constant over time to remove any influence uh, of change in quantity. Right? If there's no influence uh, from change in quantity, then it doesn't matter which number we're going to use, 50 or 10 or 5, whatever number uh, we want to use, right? Now, let's check out if that is the case, okay? So, first of all, we have to uh, recalculate the cost of living, okay? And here it's uh, $210 in the year 2000. In 18, it's $270 in 19 it's $405 okay and um, now we recalculate the cost of uh, I'm sorry the consumer price index CPI okay we find that uh, if we use the very first year 2000 as the base year then the CPI in that year is still 100 as we said before you know the CPI in the base year is always 100 okay now, the CPI in 2018, we use cost of living in 18 divided by cost of living in 2000. So it's going to be 270 over 210. Okay? We find this is 129. Okay? Previously, uh, you can go back and in, you know, uh, check out the previous video or flip back the slides, uh, which I posted on Moodle. You would find that here in the previous example, when the quantity of Coke was 50, uh, the CPI in 2018 was 140, okay? Now it's 129. Uh, CPI in 2019, here it's 193, but previously we find it's 170. In other words, when we change the quantity of Coke, we change the CPI. Why? Think about why. Here, CPI represent the price change for these two goods, Cokes and cheeseburgers, right? So it's actually the average. For example, here, 129 in uh, 2018. As we said before, this number represents a 29% increase in price level compared to the base year. Okay. Now this. 29% increase is the average increase between the Coke and cheeseburger. Okay. But this average 
will not simply add up the two prices and divide it by two. Instead, we use the price times quantity for each goods and trying to find weighted average. Once again, the CPI is a weighted average and the weight is the quantity. So the specific level or lumber uh, we used as a quantity either for coke or cheeseburger matters okay because the quantity represents how important that good is in the, our fixed market basket okay for example previously we used 50 right now it's 10 that means coke becomes less important when we figure out the price change Okay, in this uh, in this fixed market basket, the intuition is when we use ten, that means people spend much less money on coke. So the change in coke price should have less influence upon our CPI. I hope this makes sense to you. Again, if you have any questions, uh, we can talk about this during our virtual meeting. Okay. All right. Now, um, let's um, uh, give you another summary, uh, updated version of um, how to calculate or constructing uh, CPI. Okay. Now, the first step is to figure out the market basket. Okay. And um, we rely upon the consumer expenditure survey, uh, which covers about 30,000 individuals and families. Okay? They will be in interviewed by uh, uh, the government agency every three months. So for example, if you are uh, selected to participate, then you are uh, supposed to keep every receipt um, you purchased, okay? that, that, the, um, the, you spend money on, okay? and then um, give the government agency so that they can figure out what exactly you purchase and how much you purchase okay now here we'll um, show you the uh, for a typical american household were uh, or on what um, uh, items they actually spend money on okay um, so the number one uh, the largest component here in our uh, expenditure is housing. So we spend a lot of money on uh, mortgage payments and rents. Okay? What comes after uh, housing is transportation. Okay? The third one is a food beverage, um, education, communication, and medical care come after that. Okay? Uh, once again, uh, the previous slide, okay, when we uh, manipulate the quantity of coke the most important thing we learn is for this pie chart we really have to do the expenditure survey to figure it out okay to get the weight for each good or service in our fixed market basket we cannot see you know because they're fixed over the, the years so we can simply use any numbers we want for these goods and services we can't okay we have to figure out how much people exactly spend on these different goods and services to figure out their weight okay all right the second step is once we figure out the market basket we can conduct the price survey okay so um, the price survey covers about 80,000 goods and services and it has been conducted every month Okay. Now, once we get the fixed market market basket, we get the prices. We can calculate CPI. Okay. Again, um, using the uh, steps we already discussed. Okay. Like pick the base year and figure out the cost of living in the base year. Figure out the cost of living current year, and then uh, find the ratio. Okay. All right. And um. Here, um, one more th um, thing I would like to bring up to your attention is um, students always uh, tend to 
believe that you know when they calculate the CPI, um, they just you know find the cost of living in those years, and they took that as the CPI. CPI is not expressed in dollar amount. Okay, cost of living is. Uh, CPI is a ratio. So eventually, you need to find the cost of living in the current year divided by the cost of living in the base year. Okay, this is a pretty common mistake uh, I found in uh, from the previous years. All right. Um, another thing. Um, here is a quick question. Uh, is the CPI a perfect measure? Of course it's not. Okay? In social sciences, nothing is perfect. Okay? And you can find more information about why the CPI is imperfect okay? uh, in the book. Um, let me briefly talk about this. Okay? Uh, for example, uh, we, you know, along with the technological innovation, we keep introducing new goods to the market every year. However, we said that the CPI has a fixed market basket. That means we're not going to change uh, the goods or services in the basket. Okay? Uh, simply because, you know, like there are more or, or new goods and services introduced, we won't change that. Okay? So we're going to miss um, these, you know, the 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 influence from um, the prices of new goods and services. The second uh, possible reason uh, we believe the CPI is imperfect imperfect is unmeasured quantity change. Uh, for example, a Ford F one hundred and fifty pickup truck was introduced to the market in nineteen seventies. Okay, since then. It's been called F-150. However, you could, you know, think about the F-150 pickup truck in 1970 and F-150 pickup truck in 2020, okay, this year. You would find that, you know, they are basically apples and oranges. They're quite different, okay. Um, you would not uh, be able to find, let's see, a CD player. Right, uh, GPS navigation, um, and something like this. The new features um, in the pickup truck um, produced in 1970. Right, so um, even for the same goods or service, um, they have the same name. Okay, manufactured by the same firm or company. They could be different. Okay, they could have uh, different features, different functions. Yeah. So these um, change in quantity won't be captured by CPI. Okay. Um, the third one could be the substitution bias. Uh, that means if the price of something, let's say Coke, uh, increases by 10%, then some customers are going to give up purchasing Coke and buy other drinks. Okay. So the quantity could change. But once again, because of the fixed market basket, we won't change the quantity when we calculate the CPI. So these um, would lead to a biased um, CPI. Okay. And um, again, if you want more details, you can go and check out the corresponding part in your textbook.